Madam, sir, the ship lies at anchor off New Eden. A tender stands at your disposal. Dreamed of clouds, great long fluffy bastards, low over the sea. I dreamed of the abyss, in the darkest reaches of the deepest ocean. A good day to you, my love. And a good day to you, too. Are we in New England? <sighs> Welcome to America. Something is bothering you. Charles's letter. What of it? The ghost must be uncommonly dangerous, or he would banish it himself. Then we shall charge him double. <sighs> I'm serious. If the Reverend needs help, this can be no easy business. Red, you best be ready. I'll be careful, Master Duarte. Your apprentice stands ready to serve. Come on, Atea, we need to go. Night be. <laughs> Rory McWraith, gallant to the last. Life to the living, death to the dead. Consider our lovers, Antea and Red, the greatest banishers I ever knew. Life to the living, we say and death to the dead. It is not so simple. Since the dawn of humanity, the dead have lingered. Dead as alive, we are complex and emotional beings. Many entangled are the ties that bind. Since the beginning of memory, banishers have fought to sever those ties. Death is but a trifle. It comes to us all to haunt or be haunted. There lies the true horror. I, Charles Davenport, should know it. The haunting of New Eden scared me to death. I dearly wish I had not begged my friends to come and lift the curse. If this is June, I'd hate to see January. I wanted to freeze my backside off in the summertime. I'd have stayed in Scotland. London wasn't much better. Look at it. It's cold as a bishop's arse. And twice as white. I don't mind saying it, I'm very disappointed. Charles wasn't lying. New Eden is cold as death. You may well be disappointed. You'd better be at the tavern. With a hot grog. Or two. Hello everyone, this is Valhalla Gaming TV, and today we're here with something special. This one is called Banishers, Ghost of New Eden. This game is a fairly new one that just came out. 
and I'm not exactly sure everything about it, but I saw like a trailer for it and I thought it looked really cool and I finally got it. So I'm going to jump into this one and take you guys for the ride. Let's get into it. Oh, we're controlling it now. The graphics are awesome. All right, we can move and use the right thumbstick for camera. I think I'm weary of long, boring sea voyages to grim faraway lands. I can't remember the last time we did something else than work. After this, we should set sail somewhere warm and safe. The dead don't linger. No such place. But it's not a bad idea. No such place. Bird flying away. I mentioned how grim this place is. I heard you the first time, but I don't disagree. So for you guys watching, I'm playing on the Series X at the moment. We've got a compass up top. Push forward and A to pass under obstacles. Okay. Looks like we can go over ledges. Probably the same way. <laughs> kind of cool to have a character with a Scottish accent. How many games have that? Oh, we got rats. Oh, I hate those little buggers. What do we got here? I think we can get through here. Sure. Let's go traipsing through the rotten falling down house. We got some plants and pyrite. Must be crafting and stuff. Gotta go faster, man. Looks steady enough. Come on, Red. Oh, they allow you to skip through these. Interesting. That ain't good. Well, he's trapped. Ugh. Keep going. I'll find a way to meet up with you. Over eager apprentices. So he's the apprentice and she must be the master. Can we go this way? I can break my way through here. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Destroy breakable elements. Okay, and turn me this way. There we go. Well, the combat's kind of cool so far. She's got a torch, too. Okay, and the... Oh, we can block. And we got a heavy attack. All right, let's go through. Looks like there's a tent over there. Oh, is that red right there? He's going that way. We gotta go around. Ooh, this bridge is broken. Jump and tap. It looks like if you uh, look up the ground, there's like leaves and like snow. That white stuff. Or maybe that's bird poop. I don't know. Shows us where we can go. What is that? Oh, we got a monster. Right bumper for light attacks. Right trigger for heavy. Another one. Heavy attack. Oh, God. That took longer than I thought. It was like a power-up one. Oh, okay, we can lock on. Got more breakables. All right down there. Just a sneaky wonder. You? Same, but I managed. Are these specters watching the road? Maybe, but are they keeping people outside town? Or are they keeping them in? We're going to have to find that out, aren't we? So we came from New England to America. I'm guessing we're hunting ghosts. Yeah, look, that stuff's on the wall again where we can go in. I'll have to keep an eye on that. That's that game design. What's this? Ooh, it's a satchel. We got seven leather. Awesome. Oh, there's those rats again. Get out of here. Dirty rodents. Can't break that. Oh, more 
Get him, Red. He's whipping Behind him. you. Something to do with his hand. He just put his hand right through him. And it got rid of him. It's easy as falling off a box. Interesting. Can't tell how long these people are dead. The original settlers, perhaps. Whoever, this doesn't bode well. Red's going that way. We gotta go this way. And they're banishers, so he's got that on his hand. I wonder if she does too. I guess it's a way to make sure the dead's dead. What do we got in here? Ooh. Take him out. Attacking with your weapon fills the banish gauge. When the banish gauge is full, press A to banish your target. Okay. Banish. Oh yeah, she's got it too. Oh, it's got an area attack. Heavy attack. Charge it up. Ooh, one hit. Something to read. A note, damp and bloody. Perhaps these words were lost in time, but I must write them. The date? I cannot say. I know it is the month of June in the year 1695. I thought we would be safer in Providence. I thought we would finally see the children again, and the golden wheat fields would ring with their laughter. Their mother now lies dead, and I shall join her soon. Something insidious walks the roads. Terrible spirits took us. Now Eden is cursed. You who reads this, now I tell you run. That's not good. These people left New Eden town just a few days ago. What exactly is going on here? What is this? Spectral dust. Oh my gosh, that's ectoplasm. We got ghost droppings. Oh, what do you got, lady? More leather. She ain't gonna need it. Ectoplasm. I know it's spectral dust, but I want to call it ectoplasm, okay? Hey, all these people are dead. What exactly is going on here? Let's look further. Right trigger. Ooh, Alpha Wanderer. Level 4. Right trigger to deal a charge attack. And... the boomy. Ooh. Time to banish you. Oh, yeah. And he dropped... Two Spectral Dust. Man, I thought he was going to drop some Alpha Spectral Dust. You know what I'm saying? That would have been sweet. Now two's good or better than one. Still don't know what to use all that for. I'm sure we'll be told later on. Probably some kind of crafting mechanic. Alright, let's break through it. Uh, oh, B's to back up. Okay. So that's why they use A to go through stuff. That all goes badly for the case. Situation's worse than you thought. Let's wait to hear what Charles has to say. See who Charles is. Look at all that. Empty docks in a growing settlement. Not a very good sign. By the time selectmen sit on their arses. Isn't that what selectmen do? Pull outpost getting put out here. Look, they've got a... I don't know if that's a church or... Like a manor for whoever is the mayor or leader here. When we get to town, we may need to split up to cover more ground. You may count on the most responsible student a vanisher could have. We'll see if you remember some of your teaching. If you're up for it. Always. Splitting up is the worst thing you can do. What is this, Boston? Fort Jericho and the Arrow's Hamlet. I just read that. And yeah, look at that. New Eden Town. Not the busiest stables I've ever seen. No ostler and no horses. This town is less and less welcoming by the second. Why are you going over there? Because he's taking a look. Alright, come on. 
It says I can sprint. New Eden Town discovered. Let's find the inn. Let's find Charles. Bro, I think they're all dead. Who's gonna welcome us? That is the ghost. Or the wanderers, It'd I guess. It'd be good to see Charles and Esther again. <laughs> Would you a lecture on the sanctity of marriage? Uh, Esther wouldn't dare I, a pretty word for the shackles. A pretty word for a set of shackles. I'm sure folk here are just as open-minded as Charles. There's somebody in that window I saw. Oh, so there are people here. Area of investigation. You have reached the location of your current objective. Your compass now indicates that you are inside an area of investigation. Okay, look for the inn. Ah, there it goes. Look for the inn. Uh, it says the inn is right over here. We got docks in the cemetery. I'm sure we'll be heading to the cemetery at some point. But we gotta go for the inn. Which one's the inn? Maybe the one all lit up in front of us? This must be the inn. Yep. Doomsday has come. It's a good start. Let's go see if we can find that guy. Oh, there's something over here. Take it. More leather. Let's go inside the inn. Charlie, we're here. Your prayers are answered. Pour us a drink. Finally. Banish it. Please, come in. As it is called, your serving woman may sit while we talk. I'm the help. She's the boss. You're not Charles. My name is Antea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McGrath. Good day to you, sirs, madam. Now, where's Charles? Minister Davenport said help was on its way. I assume... Keep digging, Fairfax. Good day. Pennington, captain of the train band. This here is Thickskin Newsmith. We're the selectmen. <laughs> What's left of us? Why is Charles not here? We're sorry for your loss. We'll do what we can for his widow. The Reverend is dead. When? How? A terrible tragedy. Though our faith sustains us, we are still very much in shock. Our shock at Reverend Davenport's killing is so great that we must sit here in comfort, losing precious time. As governor of the colony of New Eden, it is my responsibility. Oh, look at us, sat here waiting to meet the same fate. We could all be miles away by now. You lot do what you want. I intend living. The esteemed select woman can be <coughs> brusque. Forgive her, and rest assured that her aptitudes far outweigh her manners. Or lack thereof. Her point still stands, Fairfax. Sitting here, doing nothing, we are as lambs to the slaughter. The banishers are here. Surely, with their expertise, we may yet prevail. Then I shall leave you in your expertise in ghosts and devils to find out. My expertise in blood and battle is of little use. Mistress Duarte, if I can be of service, you may visit me at home. On the other side of the street, as it were. Well, Governor, shall you leave or shall you stay? For myself, I'll stay. <clears throat> Our company has suffered terribly, but we are worth saving, and now that you are here, save it we shall. Please, accept my sincerest condolences for the loss of your friend. We feel the loss of our minister so very keenly. 
Charles Davenport was a man of great knowledge and devotion. The pride, indeed, of New Eden. It discommodes me greatly to remember how he found his body in the cemetery. Indeed, it distresses me yet further to tell you that we do not know what so tragically cost him his life. What do you think happened? Could your physicians not save him? Let's go with that one. Could your physicians not save him? Would that we had a physician left, but it would have made no difference. Charles was dead when we found him, and we do not know how or why. One or two among our company have knowledge of the physic. Purples, they said. Rupture, strangery, or sadness. Guesses, or... As a man of science in New Eden, I stand alone. You see, in my youth, I too was something of a demonologist. Rather a good one, if I say so myself. We're not demonologists, and neither was Charles. Is his widow Esther taking visitors? The widow Davenport is at home and does not much venture out. Her house overlooks the dock. I offered Charles a home with a view across a pretty meadow, but he refused. He preferred the village life. Speak to her, if she'll see you. But she knows no more than we do about how her husband died. Is it curse? Why is the town so empty? Your study of demonology. Let's ask about why the town's so empty. Why is town so empty? Of those who did not die, we are the few who stayed. Though our motivations may differ, all who remain have shown extraordinary faith and courage in the face of our adversity. Where did they go? Those who left. Where did they go? Boston, outlying settlements. Anywhere, everywhere. Although, as you may have heard, the weather has likely closed the roads. Some believe the pass through the dark woods offers salvation. I do not. I believe we must stand our ground. Will they return? Will they return when the curse is lifted? I fervently hope so. They have homes here, but we sent the children away some time ago and many could not live with their absence. If we do not resolve this situation quickly, the community of New Eden shall be broken, perhaps forever. So we're trying to save the town. You study demonology? You're a demonologist, you say? I am that, like my father was before me. Faith and science are our twin compasses, you see, to a deeper understanding of the secrets of God's green and pleasant land and those who threaten it. And what have your compasses told you about the curse? They have told me... They have told me that Reverend Davenport was better placed than I to solve our problem. Which is why you're here. We agreed it. I shall stand for the company, I said, as the moral authority, the anchor, and the rock, as Charles and his banishers lift the curse. Heroic work all round, and perhaps we'll come for advice. Perhaps we'll come for advice. Perhaps we may come to you for advice. Please do, madam, for I would be only too glad to give it. All right, let's figure out about this curse. What can you tell me about the curse? I can tell you that it has been our misery for many long months now. And I can tell you that it worsens by the increment. First, there was pestilence and disease. Then came the nightmares. Then came madness. In the end came death. And death remains. But in all honesty, I think the weather is the worst part. This never-ending winter hangs heavy on us all. Worse yet, it traps us here. What caused it and what did Charles know? Let's ask about the weather real quick. What do you think caused the curse? 
In my humble opinion, I'll point to the obvious. The abyss disgorges its spawn upon New Eden, bent on making God's poor creatures suffer. As to the nature of the demon, that's what we're paying you to find out. Our late friend Charles faced a Herculean task and acquitted himself with honor. You will have to do far better than that, I'm afraid. Our contract stands. If you'll have it, yes. Our contract stands for Charles. All right, for Charles. For Charles. Okay. Um, I wonder if we can ask that other question. What can you tell me about the curse? I can tell Skip. you that it first, but in all up. Skip through it all. If you all right. No, it wouldn't do it. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you. We have what we need. Then I wish you success. By my instruction, a room is prepared for you in the old schoolhouse. I'll be here if you need me. Old schoolhouse, huh? For Charles. So the Reverend died. The place is cursed with demons. All the people left, took the children, and then they couldn't live without the kids, so they took off. Let's see what this said. Inn's owner notice. As announced at the last town hall meeting, I hereby close the King's Arms Tavern, leaving the key to the selectmen. There shall be no ale sold nor drunk until the curse is lifted, and I return. The storerooms are locked, and so are the bedrooms. God bless. Charity Brugat. Or Krugat. Yeah, everybody is leaving. And the selectmen, are they like mercenaries or something? And he's a demonologist. See what else we can find in here before we leave. And those doors are supposed to be locked up here. Yep, just like that. What else is up here? Ooh, we got a box. Pieces of eight. We got 15. That's the money. Okay, we got currency here. 15 pieces of eight. And is there anything here? Nope, okay. Let's head out. Let's go find that schoolhouse. The compass indicates the direction Damn and distance. Charles. Those accursed sea storms. If only we'd been here earlier. No, no. But as Charles would say, another day, another soul to save. These people are idiots. These people are helpless. Let's go with it. Helpless. These people have no idea what they're up against. And we should probably help them. What is all this stuff? And uh, the compass, yep, all the yellow markers, blah, blah, blah. Read, New Eden Town's curfew. In hours of darkness, stay in your homes, no discord, no turmoil. Governor F. Haskell. A curfew? But why? Uh, the first resort of every self-respecting oppressor. You gotta save the people. The path to the meeting house is closed by the governor's decree. Closed borough. And then we got cemetery sign. This cemetery is closed by order of the governor. Okay. So he's closed down everything because of the curse. All right, we've got to go to the schoolhouse, which is this way. Is it this one? We should go to Esther. I think the governor said that house stood above the docks. Okay. Before we go to the schoolhouse, we got to go meet Esther Davenport at her house and do a little interview of the widow of the reverend and see what happened. Oh, we got some over here. The mayor said she did. She knew about as much as they did, but we don't know about the mayor too much other than he's a demonologist and he's trying to save the people. You never know. He could be the bad guy too. Let's keep an open mind and try to figure out what's going on. And here, Red. They know each other.
poor lady. I've barely slept for fear you would not come. I'm at a loss. Would God even allow me to drag you into these... these dark times? Esther, you're not alone now. We're here. I'm so sorry we didn't get here on time. Truly. I know. Charles kept saying it. Have faith. They will come. If only he had kept his faith himself. What happened to him? Poor Charles. Just one more victim of the curse of New Eden. You know how he is. Was. Restless. Impatient. It's not that he gave up on you, his friends. But that he could wait no more. I believe he tried to lift the curse. I too have questions, but I have no answers. Nor do I now have a husband. Okay, let's see about Governor Haskell, how were things before? Is there anything we should know? Let's talk about the governor. What can you tell me about the esteemed Governor Haskell? Fairfax Haskell is well read and educated, but at times his back can be too stiff. He shares Charles's interest in the unknown, but his passion seems less than practical. He's an academic. Still, good to know our patron has some understanding of our work. We met the captain too, along with the huntress, Thickskin. Do you know them? I find Thickskin Newsmith's manner a little frightening, but I think she has a good heart. A fine hunter by all accounts. Captain Pennington comes with a reputation for soldiering. He comports himself with a wry dignity, but I suspect that beneath it all, he's just... sad. Charles thought so too. There are wounds beneath Saul Pennington's armor, he said, that time and God have not yet healed. Well, if you're a soldier back then, I'm sure you've seen some stuff. How were things before? How were things, you know, before all this? Before the curse? It was a busy and exciting time. Charles immersed himself in the community here. He had a hand in everything. The people came to rely on him. I'm sure they look to someone else now, but I can't imagine it's the same. Is there anything we should know? Is there anything we should know about? Lord, deliver me, for I cannot endure this. I cannot endure it, and Charles does not deserve it. Anything at all, Esther. Please. I have felt Charles present about the house. His ghost lingers. He needs help. If he's here, I promise I will know no rest until he has his. You can count on us. We'll start with the house. Charles's papers are gathered in his office. Take what you need. Thank you, Esther. All right, goodbye. We'll take a look around, if that's all right. Let's do some investigating. May I be of any help? You stay put. We'll find the way. Hints and intent. You have unlocked your first hint. It contains important information about the person it is linked to. You can refer to these hints at any given moment through your haunting case menu. Let's check that out. Oh, look at that. We got a map. How big is this bad boy? Ooh. It looks like it might open up even bigger. Might be a pretty big game. Got our inventory. Evolution. Chronicles. New Eden. Okay. And then the haunting cases. Old friends, landfall. Understand why Charles lingers. Investigate the study, investigate the bedroom. And it looks like we got one for Esther. New Eden Town and set out in search of their friend. The Reverend Charles Davenport. Okay. Let's look at her portrait. 
not obtained. After seeing her husband's ghost, the grieving widow Esther Davenport was deeply distressed. Okay, so he's he's a ghost and he's uh, floating around out there. The once joyful and educated good friend of Antea in red is now a young widow who has lost her anchor and drifts unmoored on a sea of mourning. All right, so we got to find all these hints. To understand why a ghost lingers in the incarnate, you must gather hints about each involved inhabitant. Once the hints have all been uncovered, the inhabitant's intent is disclosed and you may complete your investigation. We gotta figure out why a ghost is here. That's Where pretty cool. Where are you staying, my dears? The governor had a room prepared for us in the schoolhouse. The schoolhouse? Wouldn't you rather stay here? You'd be more comfortable. It's very kind, but a long day ahead of us. I don't want to bother you. I don't have much, but promise me you'll come for dinner tomorrow. For all time's sake. Of course. Yes, some dinner. Let's see what this is. Bundle of letters from Charles, 21st day of February, 1687. My sweet Esther, I can't tell you how much I long to get home. This work in the mystical Scottish Highlands is exciting. I can't argue with that, but I miss the sweetness of our home. However, I know that the few months I have left away from your loving arms will be of great benefit to me. Through this experience, I will increase my knowledge and all this I do to protect you from those dark worlds that swirl around us. It is your love and trust that pushes me into these mysterious entrenchments that pushes me to do my best. It is for you that I do this, for when I can see the pride in your eyes, then I know what role I play on this earth. I know that I can be stronger. I know I can do anything, as long as I, as you look at me with the spark that is only yours. I'm thinking of you, your love forever, Charles. That's a nice love letter. Let's see this one. Bundle of letters from Charles, 5th day of January 19, or 1685. I keep saying 19. My beloved Esther, how I longed to hold you in my arms. The announcement of our marriage was to my heart as a delicacy on my palate, a sweet which one cannot tire. At last, we shall be together and together forever and ever until the day many years from now when we are old and at last death separates us. For only death can extinguish the love between us, and I'm sure that not even death can undo the tenderness I feel for you. I want everything to be perfect for our marriage, and I will make it, and I will make it so. I will write to you every day until that blessed moment when I can finally shed the weight of letters and tell you in person every day how I feel about you. I'm thinking of you, your love forever, Charles. This guy can write. Poor woman. Yep, we got something else here. Another bundle of letters in 1694, the 12th day. My sweet Esther, I was down and yet you were there to support me. You're an angel from heaven to help me in my dark mission. You are the light that guides me through the darkness of the invisible. And yet I feel so sorry for bringing you to this tortured land. You know well that the things are not as they should be in New Eden. And I am sorry to have you by my side, for I fear for your life. I wish we could have found a quiet corner of this land there to raise our children. But I fear a curse. I think we should leave, or perhaps you should go ahead, while I defend our home. Think about it, for I cannot bear the thought of darkness taking you away from me. Your love forever, Charles. Okay, so he started seeing the curse. What do we got here? That porcelain saw many a dinner turned lecture with Charles. I miss him so. So do we, Esther. He seemed like a good man that cared about his family. Okay, let's look around the house. What do we got over here? Inspect. Musical essay, Sadness in Interval, or a study of the Polonian scale by Henrich Yatry. And what do we got here? No, I already did that one. Enough music essays. What about this book? Printed book, a study of H. Purcell's Ch uh, Chapani in G minor for string by E. David. Interest. Catch on chess. Oh, another letter. Letter from a neighbor. Esther, some food and ale for you. Sorry for your loss. Your neighbor holds you in their hearts. That's nice. Here we got a door. There's more to learn here. Okay, that's the door to go outside. 
What's this? This is Charles's. It's like he never left. Anything else? Inspect Have you received other visitors? Most dare not leave their homes. Although Mr. Bachelor came to see me. That was nice of him. Does your mother guy's name? Hungry, dear? You must be starving after such a long trip. Well, I thought we said we'd have dinner tomorrow. It's no trouble. Save your provisions, Esther. I'm all right, really. Rory McGrath isn't hungry. Truly, doomsday is upon us. And we got some here. Got a symbol on it. Letter from Eleanor Combs, November 1694. My dearest Charles, how delighted I was to read your words. It is always a pleasure to hear from you, and to know that yourself and your beloved Esther are doing well. I have contacted our brothers in London, but unfortunately we could not find anything in our archives that matches the description of the events you have experienced in New Eden. Be that it that as it may, pestilence and never-ending winters are a phenomenon, perhaps too broad for us to pinpoint the exact cause. I can give you no better answer. Be it sorcery, the presence of an, um, an ichor, or something else entirely, we cannot say. All I can do is invite you to continue your research and take note of all your observations. Our Brotherhood of St. Paul's soul has so little presence in the new world. Any new information shall be precious indeed. Please stay safe, my friend. Yours truly, Eleanor Cohn. I didn't know Eleanor and Charles were still in touch. The St. Paul Brotherhood is a tie that binds. Charles was so eager to continue his research here in New Eden. If only we had known what would befall us. Got a piano. A new Scotch tune in G major by Henry Purcell. Purcell? Could you find nothing better? These days I lack the heart to play. I can't believe you brought your piano forte to New England. It cost a fortune, but you cannot part a pianist from their beloved keys. A healthy music will help her get through all that. Let's go upstairs and see what else we got. Nice house, though. Charles is still here and Esther is completely distraught. She lost him and now he's back, a ghastly figure. It must be unbearable. Oh, we got a cross. Faith always was his beacon in the darkness. In people as much as in God. He's a good man. I can still picture him crafting your very first Bane ring. You sound much more fond of the moment now than you were back then. Bit green for an actual haunting, you said. <laughs> you were. Still, you did all right. What's this? Oh, a chess piece. A precious king from a chess piece protected by a glass dome. Wonder why that is in the glass dome. That's from the set he taught me with. I'd know it anywhere. Did he keep it to remind him of his favorite? Or to remind him that he had yet to beat me. Ah, okay. Not a map? Would you look at that? Right. Oh, they got the wig. Remember when he started to wear these to look wiser and older? <laughs> he was hiding his hair loss. If I remember right, the back in the day used to wear those wigs because they either had hair loss or I think a lot of them had those like STDs that I think it might have been gonorrhea or something like that, and it caused like sores and stuff. And they use that to cover their heads. I, don't, I think I heard that sometime. Where in a documentary? Theological book from Charles' personal collection, Portalitium Bide by Alfonso de Spina. I don't know if I got these right, but I'm gonna try. Um, okay, I'll let you guys read that one. And oh, there's an inspection there, but let's look at this real quick. Charles notes, none of this side of the water and few on the other know that I came to New Eden as minister in order to pursue research into the new world on behalf of the Brotherhood of St. Paul's soul. And what strangeness have I found? There are ghosts here, yes, 
old and innumerable, but they are quiet. I shall never say the word out loud, but I suspect there to be witches. And if I find one, I shall very much like to ask her for her story. Yeah, or maybe burn them. I think this is the time when they were burning witches. Another book. The occult book from Charles' personal collection. Pod Fear de Toten by Ballast Ballastar Hans Renhofer. Renhofer. An occult book, huh? For a priest? Alright, here we go. Inspection. Scribbled Bible verses. Job 7, 13, 15. 13 when I say, my bed shall comfort me. My couch shall ease my complaint. 14, then thou scarest me. With dreams and terrifist me. Terrifiest me? Terrifiest me, that's weird. Uh, through visions. 15, so that my soul chooseth strangling and death rather than my life. She comes to me in dream. Charles's notes mention Job chapter 7, verses 13 to 15. I'll look for that reference. Red, you dropped something. Hmm. My truck is dropping pages out of books. What do all these dreams have in common? Are they the promise of a doomsday or a nightmare coming? Visions, foreshadowing. Is someone behind this? Who is the real target and what caused this anger to burst forth? I need to know how it gets into our heads. Sleep no longer offers rest, and this cannot do. Or order. These notes are erratic ramblings. Charles was worried about the curse plaguing the settler's dreams. How malicious is this curse tormenting people in their beds? Okay, let's go to the other room. We got the study. Now we're going to go to the bedroom. Where do nightmares come from? They come from the dreams. I remember the teaching of my master. May God bless their souls. Against the threatening unknown, when the common knowledge is not enough to understand a situation, the sagacious and pious man will wisely turn to the very roots of this art, the words, their meaning, and the power hidden in each of them. Nightmare has nothing to do with a nocturnal female horse, as in the French Hoshmeyer, Hoshmeyer, or the German Nachtmeyer. Uh, mare here comes from 12th century Middle Dutch and means ghost or demon. A nightmare is not a puny fiend sneaking into the bedrooms to suffocate the dreamers, but one of the rarest and most powerful spirit defined by its only purpose, to spread its insidious and unforgiving wrath upon any living soul it may reach. According to my research, no occultist ever successfully banished a nightmare. But why? Could a nightmare be more than a ghost? I'm afraid so. I remember a disturbing poem I read in London in my younger years about the terrifying ability of such entity, supposedly able to penetrate the dreams of its targets, to influence their thoughts and perceptions and make them endure their worst fears, able even to bend the distance or alter time, creating tantalizing and personalized nightmares in its victims can't hope to escape from. Such a petrifying concept, I pray God will all, with all my heart and soul that this is not what has risen upon us. How would we then escape despair, death, and doom? I need more information, but where to find them? Charles Davenport. I really like all the, the way they talk in here. They've got a big vocabulary going on. Remember how they used to argue about books we hadn't read? Like we weren't there? You actually listened. I don't always let my mind wander. Got enough books, Charles. Never enough. See, the piano is not the only thing you paid a pretty penny to ship. A silver brooch, habitually worn by Charles Davenport, engraved with a distinct three hilted sword. Isn't that like a. I think it's a holy symbol, if I remember right. Charles Davenport's brooch. Charles always wore this brooch. His things are untouched. Nothing's moved. Children's Psalm. Low children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of womb is his reward. Psalm 127.3. What's this? Doctor's note. Three drops of lavender oil and chamomile infused before sleep. Wintergreen to rub between palms and behind ears three times a day. 
If restlessness persists, use lemon balm. Evelyn. Probably to sleep. He's probably depressed. Alright, let's check this out. My dearest sister, Charles is dead. Oh, this is an unsent letter to Esther's sister. I cannot tell right from left. I cannot tell which day it is or how long ago my Charles departed. My world has come undone. Nothing happened as it was supposed to. I could not attend the burial, the shame of it. How I have failed my dear husband. I just could not find the strength to leave the house and walk to the place where Charles died, there to see him buried. Lord have mercy on us and guide our friends to us before it's too late. New Eden will not last much longer without my beloved husband to protect it. I do not have any words left in me, but I thought that you, who loved him so, should know of his passing. My love, Esther. Esther couldn't attend Charles's burial. Poor woman. That's terrible for her. Esther never got to say farewell to Charles. I could have made him manifest. Now that we know why he might be back, we should go investigate the cemetery where he was found. So I guess he's got unfinished business. He was never able to say goodbye to his dear Esther. And she never was able to see him. Esther, I'm sorry to trouble you once more. How may I help? How are you bearing up? With all that's happened, how are you bearing up? This all feels so unreal. Just one more nightmare from which I cannot wake. It seems so now, but that will change. I promise. Was there something I should have done differently? Did I fail him? Did I fail Charles? None of this is your fault. I do not want to believe he is gone. He cannot be gone. I do not permit him to be gone. You're in pain, and that might have brought him back. Maybe he lingers because you suffer. We'll do what we can to ease your pain. And we'll do what we can for Charles. Do you have any bad dreams? Has the curse brought with it nightmares? Yes. I've had nightmares. I suspect we all have. Charles warned that something was stalking our dreams. That it had a use for us. That we needed to fight it with all God's might. But... Now Charles is gone, and my nightmares have changed. In my sleep, I see my husband falling, screaming into the abyss. All hear him. None respond. He plummets on into the bottomless pit. Poor Charles. Goodbye. We must make our way to the cemetery. Please be careful, dear Antea. Alright everyone, that was the end of episode 1 for Banisher's Ghost of New Eden. So far it's really cool and the story is getting interesting. You get to be kind of like an investi investigators for ghosts and curses. So it's looking pretty interesting. In the next episode we're going to go to the cemetery and figure out what happened to Charles and see if we can figure out how to fix the curse in New Eden. Alright everyone, if you really enjoyed this kind of content, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button so my video can get spread out to other people, and I, I really appreciate your support. I'll see you in the next one. Later.